This episode of Storytellers, brought to you by Bonafonte Friction, high-quality bell housings. I'm Nikki Bonafonte, and you're watching Storytellers at Competition Plus TV. Like, I believe when I told this story uh, on, on the Storyteller uh, Christmas program, you know, we we brought up one of our good friends. He worked with us here at Coletta's. You know, he he worked, uh, you know, and he worked worked here for a long time. And uh, I, I went to work for Doug Herbert for a while, and uh, and Joe Joe went over there too. You know, and Joe Joe was a good good stand up man. He drank a lot of Jack Daniels. Uh, Always drank it out of the same roadkill cup that he had. Uh, he did shots and he and he drank Diet Coke, and uh, he drank a lot of shots of Jack Daniels and a lot of Diet Coke. And uh, so we were in uh, in Reading at Maple Grove, my favorite my favorite track, home track. Uh, you know, at the time I was staying at my house, and uh, so I wasn't staying at the hotel with the guys. And uh, Joe was he was on one that weekend. He was he was definitely drinking a lot of Jack. Um, he kept it right in his locker with all his piston racks and, and uh, his toolbox. And uh, as soon as the day was over, we'd load the car up. Good old Joe go in there and he start doing shots. So this one particular night, it's Saturday night, and uh, we're you know we're sitting in sitting there. Guys are having a few drinks. I got to drive back my house about an hour away so uh, I'm getting ready to leave and Joe pulls out this had to be a half stick of dynamite uh, and he had a bunch of them he had a whole bag of them in his locker and he says I'm gonna blow something up with this and I said Joe you don't need to blow anything up you just need to go back to the room and go to sleep so Joe uh, Joe didn't take my advice he uh, he went back to uh, he went back to the room. Proceeded to probably finish off his fifth of Jack Daniels, and uh, he decided that he was going to test out that dynamite. So I don't know. A few hours later, uh, the story be told. My old buddy uh, Doug Dragu, who's his roommate comes back from the bar and he comes in there and Joe's Joe's sitting there he's sitting there on the edge of the bed and he's got his hands over his head he's just shaking his head Doug walks in and he says Joe what's wrong is your mom okay Joe had a really old mom and he always worried about Ma thought she was going to die while he was gone and so he says uh I did a bad thing. Doug, I did a real bad, dumb thing. So, you know, Joe says it with that accent of his from Oklahoma. I, I did a dumb thing. So, of course, Doug says, what What happened, Joe? What happened? So Joe says to him, look over there. So Doug looks over, and he sees that the bathroom door is no longer on the hinges. And uh, he kind of walks over and he looks in, and all he sees is a hole where the toilet used to be, two studs sticking up with the nuts still on. He looks over in the trash can under the sink, and the whole toilet in pieces is in the trash can and next to the trash can. So Doug... He starts yelling at Joe. Joe, you didn't, you didn't put that piece of dynamite down that toilet, did you? He says, "Yeah, Doug, I, I lit it and threw it, and flushed it down there, and I, I couldn't believe what it did." Well, what it did was it blew the door off the hinges, blew the toilet off the, blew, blew the pipes out. There was a leak in the room below us, and there was a lot of damage. So. I didn't know any of this until I got back to the track the next morning. I get back to the track, and everybody's pretty quiet. Especially Joe. So, 
I find out, I go up to Doug and I said, Doug, what, what's going on? How come everybody's so quiet? He says, well, you'll never guess what Joe did. What did Joe do? He blew the shit up. <laughs> Where? In the hotel room, in our room. Wow. I guess we're in trouble. Meanwhile, our good friend Lori Frazier, she calls me. She used to do our rooms back then. Still does. And uh, Lori calls and says, we got a problem. Don't really remember the consequences, but I believe Doug had to pay for the damage. And uh, I believe we had to write an apology letter. Uh, but we were never able to stay at that hotel again. So, um, and good old Joe, he's he's uh, he's gone now, and so is Doug Dragoo. So, this story's in memory of those guys. Those those two guys are pretty good friends of mine.